Canto 10, Circle 6, The Heretics. Synopsis. As the poets pass on, one of the dam hears Dante speaking, recognizing him as a Tuscan, and calls him from one of the fiery tombs. A moment later he appears. He is Arnada Deligi Abrati, a great war chief of the Tuscan Giverines. The majesty and power of his bearing seems to diminish hell itself. He asks Dante's lineage and recognizes him as an enemy. They begin to talk politics, but are interrupted by another shade, who rises from the same tomb. This one is Cavante del Cavacante, father of Guido Cavarante, a contemporary poet. It is the genius that leads Dante on his great journey. The shade asks, why is Guido not with him? Can Dante presume to a greater genius than Guido's? Dante replies that he has come this way only with the aid of powers Guido has not sought. His reply is a classic example of the many-leveled symbolism as well as the overt criticism of rival poet. The senior Cavalcante mistakenly infers from Dante's reply that Guido is dead and swoons back into the flames. Pernata, who is not designed to notice his fellow sinner, continues from the exact point at which he had been interrupted. It is as if he refuses to recognize the flames in which he is shrouded. He proceeds to prophesy Dante's banishment from Florence. He defends his part in the Florentine politics, and then, in answer to Dante's question, he explains how it is that the damned can foresee the future, but have no knowledge of the present. He then names others who share his tomb, and Dante takes his leave with considerable respect for his great enemy, pausing only long enough to leave word for Cavalcante that Guido is still alive. Text we go along the rise of the dark city between the wall and the torments. My master leads me and I follow him. Supreme virtue, who through the impious land wheel me at will down those dark gates. I said, speak to me, for I wish to understand. Tell me, master, is it permitted to see the souls within these tombs? The lids are raised, and no one stands on guard, and he said to me, All shall be sealed for ever on the day these souls return here from Jophayet, where the bodies they have given once to clay. In this dark corner of the morgue of wrath lie Epicurus and his followers, who make the souls share in the body's death, and here you shall be granted presently not only your spoken wish, but the others as well, which you have thought perhaps to hide from me. And I, except to speak my thoughts in a few and modest words, as I learned from your example, dear guide, I do not hide my heart from you. O, Tus o Tuscan, who go living through this place, speaking so discouriously, may I please your pause a moment on your way? For by the grace of the high speech in which I hear your birth, I know you for a son of the noble city, which perhaps I vex too much in my time on earth. These words broke without warning from inside. One of the burning arcs caught by surprise, I turned in fear and drew close to my guide. And he, turn around, what are you doing? Look there. It is Fernada, raising his flames from the waste of his shade will be made clear. My eyes were fixed on him already. Erect he rose above the flames. Great chest, great brow. He seemed to hold all hell in disrespect. My guide's propped hands urged me among the dim and smoking scepters to the great figure, and he said to me, Mine, 
Mind how you speak to him. And when I stood alone at the foot of the tomb, the great soul stared at me contemptuously before he asked, Of what line do you come? Because I wished to obey, I did not hide anything from him. Whereupon, as he listened, he raised his brows a little, then replied, Bitter enemies were they to me, to my fathers and to my party, so that twice I sent them scattering from high Italy. If they were scattered, still from every part, they formed again and returned both times, I answered. But yours have not yet wholly learned that art. In this another shade rose gradually, visible to the chin. It had raised itself, I think, upon its knees, and looked around me, as if expected to find another, a uh, find though the black air that blew about me another traveller and weeping when he when it found no no other there turn back and if he cried you travel through this dungeon of the blind by the power of genius where is my son why is he not with you and i to him not by myself am i born this terrible way i am led by him who waits there, and whom perhaps your Guido held in scorn. For by his words and the manner of his torment, I knew his name already, and he could therefore answer both what he asked and what he meant. Instantly he rose to his full height. He held. What is it that you say? Is he dead then? Do his eyes no longer fill with that sweet light? And when he saw that I delayed a bit in answering his question, he fell backwards into the flame and rose no more from it. But that majestic spirit at whose call I had first paused there did not change expression, nor so much in turn his face to watch him fall. And, and if, going on from his last words, he said, Men of mine have yet to learn that art, that burns me deeper than this flaming bed. But the face of her who reigns in hell shall not be fifty times rekindled in this course before you learn what griefs attend that art. And as you hope to find the world again, tell me why is this populace so savage in the edicts that pronounce against my strain? And I to him, the havoc and the carnage that dyed the Arabia red at Montpiti has caused the angry cries of our assemblage. He sighed and shook his head. It was not alone, I was not alone in that affair, he said, nor certainly would I have joined the rest without good reason. But I was alone at that time when every other consented to the death of Florence. I alone, with open face, defended her. Oh, so many souls, Oh, so may your soul sometimes have rest, I begged him. Solve the riddle that pursues me through this dark place and leaves my mind perplexed. You seem to see in advance all time's intent, but if I have heard and understood correctly, but you seem to lack all knowledge of the present. We see as quaint, like those whose twisted sight can make out only the far off, he said, for the king of all shall grant us that much light. When things draw near or happen, we perceive nothing of them except what others bring us. We have no news of those who are alive. So may you understand that all we know will be dead forever from the day and hour when the portal of the future is swung to. Then, as if stricken by regret, I said, Now, therefore, will you tell that fallen one who asked about his son that he is not dead, and that if I did not reply more quickly, it is because my mind was occupied with the confusion you have solved for me. And now my guide was calling me. In haste, therefore, I begged the mighty shade to name the others who lay with him in the chest. And he, more than a thousand crammed this tomb, the second Frederick is here, and the cardinal of the Eubodony, of the rest. Let us be dumb. And he disappeared without 
Moore said, and I turned back and made my way to the ancient poet, pondering the words of the dark prophecy. He moved along, and then when he had started, he turned and said to me, What troubles you? Why do you look so vacant and downhearted? And I told him, and he replied, Well, may you bear these words in mind. Then pausing, raised his finger. Now pay attention to what I tell you here. When finally you stand before the rays of the sweet lady, whose bright eyes shall all from you will learn the turning of your way. So saying, he bore left, turning his back on the flaming walls, and we passed deeper yet into the city of pain, along a track that plunged down like a scar into the sink, which sickened us already with its stink. <laughs>